Hi folks, uh, yesterday I did a video tutorial on this kind of a truss structure which is in two dimensions and it was uh, subjected to a, a transverse load right at this node. These other two nodes were not, these other two loads were not, were not present and there was a, a load that up, was applied here which was uh, over a very short duration uh, uh, period. So I saw that problem as a, a, a dynamic problem, in fact, using the explicit dynamics uh, uh, feature in 3D experience. I, uh, in doing so, I did a few uh, operations in creating the model that I mentioned is not a very efficient way of doing it. So I decided to come back and repeat that problem uh, for a static situation where the loads are as shown here. Now, uh, in order to do that, I will have to join certain geometry. Uh, the difference in the, in, the, in the other video for the explicit dynamics, I created the nodes in the points individually, the lines individually, and then I had to mesh the lines, hide the points because you can apply a load on a point. Anyway, so there is an easy way of doing it, and that's the purpose of this tutorial. Okay, uh, this is taken from uh, that uh, source down here, and uh, uh, it's done entirely in the Abacus AE program. And uh, once again, I want to remind people that uh, something like that was done in that link on, on, on the playlist, uh, uh, which is listed there. And uh, however, I'm doing this thing differently. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go to uh, uh, the uh, 3D experience interface. I start with a, a, a generative shape design. The reason I go into generative shape design is because I want to be able to use the joint feature. And if I do it in part design, I have to go back eventually to generative shape design. Might as well go do it now. A couple of things. First of all, let's make sure our units are in meters. So I go here on the preferences. Uh, if uh, if you check uh, uh, parameters and measures, units, uh, my length is in meters right there. You can see that. And then I also want to make sure that the grid spacing on my sketcher is about uh, roughly uh, maybe uh, two meters. Okay, so I go here. I go to the... Uh, uh, See now, I go here uh, to this other tab under the 3D modeling core, uh, core, select the sketcher, okay, and change the grid spacing to two to make my job easier for visualization purposes. Okay, on that vertical plane, I will sketch. Now, remember, that means each of these is two meters long. So let me uh, make a profile here, starting from here to there. Oh, uh, actually, we have to zoom out further. Yeah, these are two meters. Okay, those are point two. Let me delete this. Okay, so uh, where is this? Okay. So this is, uh, you can see roughly two meters, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna fix these later on. Okay, so right now, I'll just go ahead and do uh, roughly my geometry. Here's the other fellow, you zoom out, here's the other guy, and go here, we'll clean it up. Uh, go there, come down, go there, and I go there. Okay, and then I need a couple of more lines here. We do a line from here to here, and another line from here to here. Okay, let's make sure that these are uh, these are good. Uh, first of all, I want this thing to be starting over there. So that point control this line, this axis. Uh, I can make it uh, the different ways of doing this thing. One is uh, I can use this icon. Uh, make it coincident, okay? 
Good. So now we can put some dimensions, can put some dimensions there. Uh, let's see now. So this dimension two, it's close to two, but not exact. All right. Another one. Two. And another one. Uh, two. Okay, these are two also. That's already two. And I want these things to be one point. Uh, these things to be, oh, these two to be 1.5. So let's see now this uh, 1.5, 1.5, uh, okay, and uh, yeah, that's good. I think they're good. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, make sure that these are very, very good, very good. So this geometry that you see here is exactly what you see there. Now, exit. <laughs> And this is where I'm going to join these things. So I go to here's join. And this join is available in generative shape design. That's why I didn't do this thing in part design. Eventually, I had to come back here. So I select that. Now, when I say, uh, when I select this sketch, it's going to come back with an error. It says that, uh, you know, basically, this is a non-manifold, et cetera, et cetera. So I say, OK. Uh, it might take some time to also say no. I'm going to uncheck this check manifold and then preview and no problem. You say okay. All right. Okay. Let's apply some uh, material to this thing. So we go to tools, uh, create a material. I'll call this thing uh, January 22. 2024 steel. There is a database that I can use, but uh, I'll make it. Refresh this. Okay, uh, January 22, 2024 steel. So I'm going to apply and I'm going to put it on that part. And green check mark is checked. And now we're going to input the value. So we go here, double click on that. Uh, we don't need the uh, we don't need the density because we're solving a static problem. So it goes structures, abacus multiphysics, mechanical elasticity, elastic, and it's two hundred gigapascal, two hundred GPA, and Poisson ratio of point two nine. Although Poisson ratio is not used here, but uh, we will do that. That's uh, pretty much it. So now we're going to go and mesh this thing. So where do we do that? We go to uh, Structural Model Creation, MTFEM. Under Meshing, I select the beam mesh, and I select the entire joint. And I put here three meters, because remember, this is two meters, this is one and a half. I want to make sure that the there's a single element, therefore I make a three three a three meter long mesh size. So that'll be each one, one of these is going to become one element. So we go mesh and say okay. Now how do I know that uh, this is uh, working fine? So under the display, if you go to the element shrink, you, you can see that the elements, uh, there's only a single element in there if you do a shrink here. Shrink. Okay, good. Say okay. All right, uh, properties. So we're going to go to properties. This is not, uh, it's a link property. You click on it and uh, you select the join. You can select the join. Everything is selected at the same time. And the radius was, uh, uh, the radius was uh, uh, one centimeter. So let's uh, make uh, area is pi r squared. So it's going to be 3.14 e to the minus four meter squared. All right, good. Uh, that's uh, pretty much it. 
Now we're doing a static problem, so what we should, we can do is to go with structural scenario creation. In the one that I did explicit dynamics, I had to go to mechanical scenario creation because explicit dynamics is not available up there, but it is available here. However, I'm going to go to uh, uh, structural scenario creation. Okay, well, I, I can do it down here too, but I'll go there. <laughs> All right. So the model is the one that we created. All right. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna on the procedure we're gonna add the static procedure, static step and because we leave it the put we're we're allowing potential geometric nonlinearity which is automatically checked I'm gonna make this thing uh, smaller point oh one is gonna be very fast and so I did the initial time increment of point oh one yep that's good all right I notice that we have two green check marks here uh, under uh, boundary conditions. Because I joined this thing, I can actually go ahead and select the, the join. So the whole thing is selected. And uh, fix displacement. Uh, I want to make this thing two-dimensional problem so that nothing moves in the direction X. So uh, by selecting the join, it says everything in that join does not move in the X direction. But these two endpoints are actually pinned. So I do another one. I can select this point and that point also say do not move in Y and Z. Already they don't move in X because of the fact that these uh, these uh, uh, lines don't move in the X direction. Okay, good. Let's put the force there. So uh, a load, a force. At this point, at this uh Vertex, I have minus 6,000. Remember, if there was a point there, as I had it in the explicit uh, tutorial, explicit dynamic tutorial, I had to hide that, hide that point because you can't put a, a load on a point. Okay, so that's good. Another one over here, and this is minus 5,000. And finally, one over there, which is 3,000. One is 3,000. Okay. Good. <clears throat> By the way, notice that the relative size is taken into consideration. You can, un uh, you can go and uh, change some settings so that these are all the same height. Number-wise, they're different, of course, but uh, I think my setting is so that it shows the proportion of the value that you put in. All right, so we go to simulate. Let's do a quick model and scenario check. That's fine. Let's do a quick simulation check to catch any uh, unusual things or obvious unusual things. I don't anticipate any problems. <laughs> And finally run it. I just want to make a comment while this is running. Uh, when I did the explicit dynamics calculations, in that video, I completely, I, I made a mistake. I thought the radius was two. The radius was two centimeters. Actually, the radius was one centimeter. So the numbers that I got in that video tutorial are off by a certain factor from what uh, this YouTuber YouTuber got. Just just be aware of the fact that the, everything was okay except that I made a mistake in putting a radius or area which corresponded to radius of two. But this is this is done, and. Uh, because of the nonlinear problem, it did it in increments. So this is the final increment. And if you look at this, oh, this is one meter stress. Let me change this thing to displacement, 13.4 millimeter at the tip. And if you go to that video tutorial, he says he is a screenshot of the fellow. And this is 1.33 e to the minus two meter, which is pretty much 13.4 millimeter okay 
that takes care of the whole idea behind this tutorial this video tutorial was to do the meshing a different way okay in the explicit one i went and created points and then lines and point and then line etc and i did not join them uh, this is why i had when it came to to meshing i had to go to the mesh to the, the the meshing of each bar one by one it was a bit longer inefficient way of doing it well, all right good luck